What do you do when life doesn't go exactly the way you want it to? I mean, what do you do when you wake up in the morning and things just haven't panned out? Today on the Ask Me Anything show, I'm going to be starting with some thoughts on what to do when life doesn't exactly obey your every command. Welcome to Ed Talks Live. Hey there, welcome to the show. My name is Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author and your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. Just said hello to several of you who just joined us inside of chat. If you just joined us, this is a show that runs daily, Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock Pacific, one o'clock Eastern, and the goal is to get you closer to your goal of making more money, having a bigger impact on the world, and building your business around your life and not the other way around. But I started today's show by asking you a question. What happens when life doesn't happen the way you want it to? Now, I'm going to just be fully uh, uh, transparent with you and tell you that over the last couple of days, uh, I've been in kind of one of those moods. You ever been in one of those moods? You know, I mentioned this on the show the other day where like uh, the, the best way I could describe this, if, you, if you've ever seen the, 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 uh, the show Winnie the Pooh or read the book, there's a character inside that book named Eeyore. And if it's the most beautiful day and everything is going right, Eeyore will be the one who will be like, yeah, but it's going to rain sometime soon. And I've had a couple of days this week where I kind of felt a little bit like Eeyore, where all of a sudden you're kind of like, you know what, what what's happening? <laughs> like, what's happening in, in our world? And full disclosure, some of that is being driven by the decisions that's being that are being made by our leaders. I, I think that we are making majorly uninformed decisions that ha- are having disastrous long-term consequences, but we haven't thought through those because our leaders are trying to save their jobs in the moment. And, uh, and so what do you do when things aren't going the way you want them to? In fact, some of us would be right now, if it wasn't for this coronavirus pandemic, some of us right now would be in Dallas, Texas on day two of the Ultimate Speaker event. And I certainly wish we could be there right now. But I've told you that this is the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. So I'm not going to leave you stuck in what do you do with bad days. I'm going to show you some ideas and some ways that you can get yourself uh, more motivated, more positive, more inspired. Because The truth is, the reason why there are people out there making decisions on your behalf and and arguably making awful decisions on your behalf is because great people, great inspired people got demotivated one way or another and are not in leadership positions. I would argue that the folks who are leading us right now at the state level, at the national level, potentially shouldn't be the ones there. You should. We should, and we're heading in that direction. But until then, what do you do when things don't work out as planned? I'm gonna give you a few ideas on that in about 30 seconds. But before I do that, let me just tell you, this is your show today. So this is the Ask Me Anything show. In just a moment, I'm gonna be jumping into chat where the questions will be asked. And so if you're on YouTube, jump in on the right-hand side and say hello. Uh, Usually about a third to a half of the viewers actually do say hello in chat. So if you're just hanging out there behind the curtains, come on over and say hello. Just tell us who you are. We'd love to have you join our community. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, that's right below you in the comment section. I can read your question and answer your question and no question is off limits. I've always said in the introduction to this show, you can ask anything you want. It doesn't mean I need to answer it, but you can ask anything you want. So like last show, someone's like, can I have your bank number? I'm like, no, I don't think I'm gonna answer that question. But when it comes to business, productivity, time management, life skills, really growing your business, changing the world. Let's talk about those things and let's engage on those topics. And all you need to do in the chat section is just format your question by using the word question and then everything else comes after that. And in a moment, I'm going to say hello uh, to you in chat. Some of you joined us early, early. Roy Red was here 25 minutes early. Dennis, you were here as well too. Uh, So it's good to see you here early on the show. Now, back to my original question. You know what? We live in a fallen world. We live in a world uh, that's not perfect. We all know that. Even your actions, my actions all the time aren't perfect all the time. And when we all put that together in a great big gigantic world, you know, sometimes things happen. 
And when they do, you as an entrepreneur need to have the tools to be able to pull yourself up through that malaise, through that discouragement and flat out get it done. So for a moment, I'm gonna share with you some of my tools that I use right here in my business uh, to get going and to get uh, productive even when you're not feeling that way. Now, my first tool comes directly out of this book and many of you have read this. If you haven't, uh, the website below you, by the way, uh, that says free stuff at edrushbook.com, you can get a copy of this book at the absolute lowest price on Amazon. If you turn in this page, uh, in this book to, um, excuse me, I got the page wrong. Here we go. Uh, if you turn, well, oh, I lost it. Here it is. So if you turn in uh, this book to page 109, I know you're not going to be able to read it, me pointing at the camera, uh, but this is a, a section called the 21 Day Happiness Miracle. Now, some of you know in this book, I break down 10 different areas of your life, including relationships and mindset and money and business and addiction that you can make fast strides forward in changing your life very quickly. <clears throat> in this section, in the 21 Day Happiness Miracle, what I do is talk about how the fact that happiness is actually an emotion and emotions are attached to a way of thinking. And so one of the ways to change emotions is to change the way that you're thinking. And inside of this chapter, I'm not gonna read it, but I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of the hacks that I use. So these are called backdoor brain hacks. It just so happens uh, that your body is connected to your mind, and if you can change the state of your body, you can often change the state of your mind. Okay, so I wanna, I wanna show you a section, and, and one that I implemented this morning. So for example, uh, this morning I'm on my 21st day of my challenge to wake up every day for 21 days with a five on the first digit of the clock. So today was at 5.58 again. Today is the last day, by the way, so I'm gonna go back to sleeping uh, normally after this. Uh, but I woke up this morning, uh, had my little devotion, did a little bit of a workout, and then as I came upstairs, <clears throat> excuse me, to have my breakfast, I was in one of those moods. I was just kind of like, man, I just looked at the news, I was thinking about what's happening in California, and I was in one of those moods. And so what I implemented was a strategy that I, that's right here in the book on page 111 called the present-minded meal. Now, let me just read this section quickly. It's only two paragraphs. Uh, it says, another hack is one I call the present-minded meal. For 21 days, your only job is to be 100% present during meals. It works like this. You take a bite of food, you put your fork down and rest your hands. Now, focus 100% of your attention on what's going on in your mouth. Chew slowly. Taste every bite. Notice the difference in texture and taste. Focus. When you're completely done with that bite, pick up your fork or sandwich and do it again and repeat until you're full. So one of the techniques that I use is called the present-minded meal. I put that technique into my life because I realized that for most of my life, I've been eating my food like I was angry with it. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's just like a step to move on to the next thing. And I realized that God had, God's given us this beautiful, uh, uh, these, this beautiful opportunity every day where we get to actually consume things that make us joyful, that, uh, that, that, that we like. I mean, think about this, like cows just eat grass all day long, you know, and hay. That kind of stinks, man. I'm gonna get old to be eating hay all day long. But as humans, we've got this wide array of foods that we can eat and enjoy and consume and change the taste of just a little bit. And so this morning, I made this big plate of scrambled eggs with some sausage inside of it. And then I've been dairy free for the most part of cow dairy for uh, almost about 45 days. But I've been eating goat uh, off and on. But I've been eating uh, goat milk, and I found this really great, uh, my wife did, found this really great goat milk cheese that I mixed into the eggs this morning. And then I had this great little roll, this little gluten-free roll that I ate and poured some ghee over top of my uh, eggs and then put some salt on top. And then I just sat there for a moment. I'm just thankful for that little bit of food. The eggs came from my chickens in the backyard. And then I ate, take a bite, put your fork down. Think about what's in your mouth. Enjoy it for a moment. All of a sudden you can taste things that you weren't tasting before, the little grains of salt and the taste of the way the cheese is mixed with the eggs and then you put your fork down and then you take your fork back up and you do it again. And I will tell you, my breakfast today lasted about 10 minutes. But during that 10 minutes while focusing on that one thing, my mind wasn't focusing 
on all the negatives around it. And you know what? After breakfast, I felt better. So just one small strategy, just one little technique to make your day better. But you know what happens when you do that? It spreads into the corners and it actually makes other things better as you do that. You start to smile. You look outside and realize that the sun is out. I know everyone's wearing masks, okay? <laughs> On like, I saw a guy yesterday. Oh, I shouldn't even go here. I saw a guy on a mountain bike all alone flying down a trail with a surgical mask on. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a, um, uh, what, what are they called? The, the um, epidemiologist. I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't, I, I don't study viruses, but I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you can ride your mountain bike at a thousand miles an hour and be okay. All right. So before I do that, I need to get into chat and say hello because all of a sudden chat just exploded while I was uh, pontificating. Uh, so John Teague, welcome to the show. Hang on. Let me get rid of that. A little branding on the bottom there. John Teague, welcome. Hello. It's weekend now in the UK, man. I love it. Um, close in time. Looking forward to another inspiring hour. Me too. Good morning, Robert. Good to see you, Denise. Uh, as usual, Sheree. Hello in Yorktown, Virginia. Um, <laughs> hey, what's up, Aaron Miller? Good to see you, buddy, from Dallas. Uh, Gina, 10 a.m. Asleep. Good morning. I wish we were there too. Uh, by the way, plans coming together for that, and I'll tell you about that next week. Um, Focus Friday, baby, ABC. Don't forget that at the end of today's show, I'm going to be asking you for your implementation item. Uh, the one thing that you're going to take into action this week uh, that you're going to commit to doing right in front of the community. And by the way, I'll be taking your questions in about 45 seconds. So jump in. Um, and I'm not even sure what is WOW. Oh, director of WOW? I'm not sure what your question is. I can, I can get that. Hello, Roy. Good to see you. Aubrey, how are you? Ben Farmer, welcome to the show. Again, there's the link to the book if you haven't done that. David Zett says the book changed my life forever. I love it, man. I saw David Zett's running on Instagram up a hill the other day. Uh, Aubrey, see ya. Have a good day. Uh, Roy said, I played basketball angry, and so I bring that to entrepreneurship. Some people don't like it. And as long as you got it under control, baby, I love it. Uh, love that mindful eating is actually the way to lose weight. It's interesting. When you do that, you, you do stop. And you go slower, which is good, but you do stop when you don't. Um, Mike says, you can also chew each bite 30 times, count them to focus on eating. I tell you, I had a doctor that recommended that I did that, and I realized when I did that, Mike, that I was swallowing full amounts of food whole and giving my stomach the task to digest like a half a piece of steak. Um, hey, Rafal, thank you. Uh, he said, how would we all give Ed the thumbs up? I appreciate that, dude. Uh, thank you. Um, Aaron Miller, I'm going to take your question first. Can we do overlapping 21 day sprints, different things, or is it better to do one at a time? Um, Dennis says, when I give thanks before a meal, I sometimes thank God for taste, but it's interesting. I have a friend of mine I know here in San Diego who doesn't have taste anymore. He actually had a problem and then he lost the taste of the food. And I thought, man, it's something, it's those little things like that, uh, that just make you smile. I mean, it just makes you thankful. Think about this. Look, 200 years ago during, you know, the scarlet fever outbreak or pandemic, we didn't even have the ability to connect digitally like we're doing right now. So it's these little things that make us um, uh, really pleased and thank you uh, for sharing that as well. Uh, Barry Gamir, Ed Rush, the professor of pontification. All right. So if you just joined us, uh, my name is, hang on, let me get rid of that. Uh, my name is Ed Rush. This is Friday. This is the Ask Me Anything show. Uh, I was going to do this about every other Friday, but we've been doing this and having fun with it so far. So uh, today I'm going to be taking your specific questions. This is your show. Uh, and typically the way that it works is I'll get like one question every seven minutes until the end. And then all of a sudden I get uh, 20 questions in the last 15 minutes. Uh, so if you've got a question about business, about personal development, about productivity, about time management, uh, now is the time. And by the way, uh, just a reminder, next week, I've got my friend Jonathan Sprinkles coming in. Uh, to, he's the connection coach. We're going to talk about connecting after COVID, the new rules for building trust and uh, closing sales. Jonathan is one of the best uh, communicators that I know. And then I'm going to be starting a new series next week around the theme of accelerating your business. So uh, as you know, I was a fighter pilot for quite a bit of time. So acceleration is something that I do. I help, I've helped over 400 business owners really accelerate their business. And I'm going to be working well, with you next week to accelerate how to speed things up in your business. I'm going to be giving you some tools 
uh, for how to do that. All right, so into the comment section. Um, let's talk, Aaron Miller says, can you do overlapping um, 21 day sprints, different things, or is it better to do uh, one at a time? So uh, Aaron is referencing, by the way, uh, this book or the philosophy behind this book, 21 Day Miracle. Uh, this is a book that I wrote several years ago, uh, by far my most popular book, sold almost 30,000 copies of that thing. At one point it was Amazon's number one business book, number 22 book over all books uh, on Amazon. And so I get qu quite a few questions about the philosophy of the book. And so I'm gonna take you back quickly into the philosophy just in case you're new to this and then I'm gonna answer Aaron your question. So the philosophy is that the most successful people in the world build their life around strategic sprints. Uh, that consistency, the idea of doing the same thing every single day is an idea that's been bandied about in the success world. But the truth is that the most successful entrepreneurs uh, are always off doing new and interesting and innovating. And so that belies the whole idea of consistent every single day, consistent every single day. Uh, in fact, I go so far as to say in the book that in certain cases, consistency is for losers and half of uh, the world wasn't even designed to do that. And so for example, if you have a gym membership uh, that's burning a hole in your pocket that you signed up for and then you went there for like three months and then you didn't go anymore, that's because you were probably designed to go there for three months and then move on to something else. Okay, I'm getting uh, towards the end of a sprint that I'm doing around yoga and kettlebells and I can tell you, I'm getting a little tired of it. I've been doing it in a disciplined fashion, but now it's time to move something else into the workout regime to make things interesting for me. That's going to end up being a little bit of free weight. So, okay. So that's the theory behind 21 day uh, sprint. Now, Aaron, you can do as many as you want. So for example, right now I'm using a app called Habit Bull. Uh, and inside of this app, Habit Bull, that I'm um, showing you right now, I am actually tracking four separate different sprints that I'm doing. Three of them, uh, Aaron, I've got on 21 day. Uh, so the first one is, uh, I've actually extended this one, but the first one is every day for 30 minutes, I'm doing either kettlebells or yoga. Uh, every day for the last 21 days, I've woken up with a five on the first number of the clock, which basically means 559. And then every day for one hour a day for the last 21 days, uh, I've been praying. So I'm coming to the end of all three of those that were actually all running simultaneously. Uh, and then I'll be implementing some new ones in some new ways. So you can do as many as you want in whatever sequence uh, that you want, and you can overlap them as, as much as you want. I would just suggest, su suggest to make sure that it's planned. In other words, uh, avoid doing this. Sometimes, um, I don't know why this is coming to my mind as an example, but you know, um, I'll, say, I'll say maybe this happened to a friend of mine. Uh, that I know really closely, but it's never happened to me. Um, do you ever have one of those nights where you know you drink a lot <laughs> and then you wake up in the morning and you're like, I'm never drinking again. I, I don't know if you've ever experienced that before, but I have some friends that tell me about that and said that that has happened to them. I would avoid making decisions in that morning. You know what I mean? Like if, you, if you're like, I'm never in my life ever, 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 you know, that's not the time to do it. Usually the best time to do it is after a period of peace and some meditation and then you look at your life and you go, okay, what, what do I want to move forward? What's the ball that I want to move forward? So the two ways to look at this in terms of choosing your sprints, there's 10 in the book, but in the book I tell you, you can do as many as you want. I've got people that have done it in all different areas of their life. And so what I usually look, I recommend is that people look at their life in the areas of their life and see where do I want to move the ball forward. So for example, in business. Right now, I'm focusing on getting more leads. That's it, really, just more qualified leads in the business. So we're sprinting on that a little bit. On the personal side, just working on kind of bringing my body into the shape that I want it to be. So I'm sprinting a little bit on that side. Sometimes you want to work on relationships a little bit and put some attention uh, into some areas that, that you want to grow, maybe with your kids or something like that. The idea of the sprint, though, is to build longer habits that sustain themselves past the sprint, but to really stick those in uh, place. All right. So that is Aaron Miller. Uh, can you do overlapping 21 day sprints? So thank you for that, Aaron. I appreciate that. And by the way, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is the Ask Me Anything show of Ed Talks Live. Glad to have you on board for the live show. I'll be taking your questions all day today. I've got two more questions in chat, which means if you get your question in now, I will be answering it. All right. Or for the most part, assuming that, you know, it's a question that I want to answer. All right. So um, I'm going to do Mike's uh, really quickly. Mike Semmel, you should know what this is actually behind me. Uh, Mike says, can you play the Rams horn behind you like a trumpet? Uh, this actually right behind me, I'll pull this up. I'm, I'm, it's great that you've noticed this, Mike, um, because this 
this right here, um, I actually exchanged this. There were a bunch of books that were sitting up on the shelf. And about two weeks ago, I put this up there and I was wondering if anyone was going to ask me about this. So this, um, this is a, a ancient uh, Hebrew shofar. And Mike, I got this shofar when I was in Israel uh, uh, almost exactly a year ago. So I spent uh, a week in Jerusalem and then I toured around Israel, went to some holy sites. I actually was speaking uh, there. So at an event that I was speaking at, uh, and while I was there, uh, they were selling these, essentially these ram, ram horns. Now, Mike, you know this, but uh, the, the shofar was used in ancient Israel to announce uh, the beginning of a worship service or the beginning of a feast, uh, of, of, a, of a particular feast. Uh, and so I brought this home as a reminder. Uh, and in, interestingly, Denise, I'm going to be getting into answering your question, and this is the answer uh, to the reminder of this. This this is a reminder for me, and I'll, I'll I'll go into why this is so important in just a second, uh, why reminders are so important. But this is a reminder uh, to let your voice or let your sound be heard in such a way that it inspires and moves people uh, to positive action. Okay, so uh, for example, if you, um, I guess I'll just put this over here for now. Uh, if you are on social media, uh, for example, uh, if you happen to be on uh, Twitter. Um, you will find that if you spend much time on a website like Twitter, you will leave pretty depressed, actually, after a little bit of, little bit of time because people are using their voice, they're using their sound in such a way that devolves the national conversation. So, quick side point, and then I'm going to jump back into the main point. Uh, there is a book called Power Versus Force by David Hawkins, which is a deeply profound read. And what he has done is tracked the actual strength coming out of human bodies when based in anything from fear and anger all the way up into unconditional love. And no surprise that as you go higher into joy and peace and acceptance and love, you actually physically get stronger. And as you go down into worry and fear and anxiety, you actually physically get weaker. Well, nationally right now, our discussion is devolving so much that it's not surprising that nationally we're sick. Okay, so this uh, shofar for me is a reminder to use the communication that I am uh, that I am put it, putting into the world in such a way that it moves people to positive, inspired action to actually change the world for actual good. Okay, um, now last little side point on that question. Uh, the second side point is the is the is, as I said that I use things to remind me of things. So for example, those of you who have taken my productivity course called the 21 Day Time Freedom Miracle know that one of the recommendations is to get clocks and to put them on the walls of your office, on at least four of the walls of your office so that you're literally surrounded by clocks so that when you walk into your office, you're reminded of the fact that the time and how you're using it is vitally important because you've now taken yourself away from your family into your business to do business and how you use your time is really important. I use those clocks as symbols, as signs to remind myself of where I'm going and why I'm there. Another little secret for you, I haven't told anybody this, Mike, uh, is on the wall right there, I have the invitation to the inauguration in 2016, or 2017, uh, the presidential inauguration. I was actually at the Washington Mall in 2017 when the president was inaugurated, and I have that sitting up on my wall as a reminder, uh, and that reminder to me is that at some point, we're moving in that direction. Uh, at some point, we as a community are going to take over. <laughs> I've been saying this the whole time, right? At some point, entrepreneurs like us are going to be in charge, and so I have that on my wall to remind me of that. Right next to it, Robert uh, Ignoski, you might remember this. You sent me a letter, a letter uh, that you sent uh, to uh, the, the folks at, um, oh, well, you sent a letter uh, to, a, to an influential person in, in the uh, spiritual uh, realm, and you copied me on the letter, and you told them in, in the letter about me. Well, that, for me, was a very encouraging uh, letter, so I actually have that sitting up on my wall, and that's a reminder that when you know that life isn't going the way that you want it to, man, you, just a reminder that there's people that are always behind you. So my point, Mike, in answering the question about the shofar is all around, I have these little, little triggers and little reminders to myself so that it can put me into the state that it wants me to be in, all right? So 
that was like a longer answer to that question than I was even planning on. Mike, thank you for that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back uh, quickly. And by the way, if you just joined us, uh, this is the Ask Me Anything show. My name's Ed Rush, former F-18 fighter pilot, five-time number one best-selling author. Usually on these Fridays, uh, I take time off from interviewing one of my guests or talking about a topic so that we can talk about the topics that you have on your mind. Uh, and as usual, chat just blew up and a whole bunch of questions. So I'm gonna go through these, uh, as much of the questions that I can do. And I really appreciate Rafael, appreciate Rafael. Uh, you saying, how about we all click thumbs up under the video? I appreciate it if you would click that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I'm getting close to a thousand subscribers on YouTube and at a thousand, you get to do some different things when it comes to advertising, which are beneficial. So if you know anybody who needs to click that subscribe button, you do that too, okay? So uh, Denise, question she asked is, how can people get their voice into government when there is so much uh, divisiveness? All right, so I'm gonna give you two thoughts on this question. One is absolutely not the one that, that I don't, uh, that, that people typically think about in this particular area, but the second one is, okay? And I'm gonna do the second one second because this is the one that most people think when they answer the question, but I'm gonna do the first one first. The first one, and I mean this when I say this, the first one is to make and keep as much money as you can. Now, I know that sounds like a strange answer to the question because we're talking about catalyzing movements uh, that create change in governments. And it doesn't all come down to money. But what I will tell you is that some of the most influential people in the world when it comes to policy are also some of the most evil people in the world. Now, it just so happens that some of the most influential people in the world who are simultaneously the most evil people in the world are also the most wealthy people in the world. And if it wasn't for the wealth, their influence wouldn't be what they currently are. Now, as I was just describing that, someone popped into your head, okay? And, and it, it's different for everyone when you think of the wealthy, evil person, but what I can tell you is that, is that wealth is a simple tool that can be used for good or for evil. Now, most entrepreneurs that I know are heart-centered, honest people with a vision for sharing a message that's going to change the world. The challenge, however, is that when you're heart-centered, what you end up doing sometimes is latching on to belief systems that don't match your heart-centeredness. And these belief systems typically are what I would call poverty-minded belief systems. So for example, um, there's no movies that I can think of where billionaires are shown in a good light. Because in our culture, we often relate riches uh, to evil. And by the way, that's probably because a lot of our billionaires are evil. Uh, but our culture does that. So what happens is good people go, I don't want that. I don't want to, I don't want that. And so good people turn into what I call way stations. You turn into a way station for money. Now, the truth is that in the world, means, the means actually mean something. So if you're going to move the ball forward on a political movement, you need a message and you need followers and you need to catalyze a movement, but you also need the resources to be able to run advertising. And you also need to have resources to build teams, and the truth is that those resources typically are uh, start with financial resources. Now, just to be clear, this is not the only thing you need. So this year, we saw a billionaire, Tom Steyer, and billionaire Mike Bloomberg run about the worst two political campaigns I've ever seen in my life, okay? They were awful, but they had a lot of money. So money's not the only thing, like you can't just buy an election with money, but it starts with that, and so Denise, this is why business is so important. This is why when I talk about politics, if I go into leadership, I'm still talking about business because business is so important for good people to make wealth in a good and honorable way and then keep that wealth so that you can use that for good. Okay, so that's the first answer and that's the one that people aren't uh, typically uh, ready for when I give them that answer. The second one is to do the next most logical thing for you and whatever that means. And usually what that means for a business owner is to begin to build a following, right? And so that's what I'm working on right now. Remember I said we're working on building leads? One of the very first things you can do is work on building a following because when you combine the following 
with your business, you're gonna make some more money, which will be helpful over here, but it also gives you a platform to share your voice. Now, the great thing about building a following is you don't even have to have everyone agree with you on everything. So for example, when I talk about the importance of breaking up the two-party system in the United States and replacing it with something better, I have people who are some of the most far-right uh, people. Uh, I did a speaking event, uh, so this is about four years ago. I did a speaking event, and in the event, I was talking about the need in our country to change the way that we lead. And after the event, I had two people walk up to me at different, at different times within about 10 minutes. The first person that walked up to me was a, a Republican who runs Republican campaigns for a living. He's a, a, a campaign consultant. And he came up to me and he said, dude, I am on board with what you just said. So he walked away. The next person who came up to me was a woman uh, who lives in Northern California. She's married to a former Catholic uh, nun. Um, she's one of the most environmentally active people that I know. Uh, and she campaigned uh, actively for Jerry Brown, who's a, a Democratic uh, governor uh, in uh, California. And she came up to me and she said, I'm on board, whatever you, you need me to do. Now I thought about that and I thought, wow, I communicated somehow in such a way that I attracted the far right and the far left who both wanted the same thing. And it was in that moment that I realized that as a country, 90% of what we want is the same. It's only the government and the media who are focusing on this 10% thing so that they can divide you. And they're dividing you because there's money in division. People don't donate money to, to things that are just okay. They donate money to things that they're like, yeah, we gotta go out and beat those bad people, right? And so the media and the politicians divide. But about 90%, like I said, of the things as Americans, and probably more like 95%, we totally agree on. I'm talking about left, right, no matter what. Like, in fact, if you put two people next to each other on an airplane, uh, one person was extreme right, one person was extreme left, and they just started talking about their lives, and they just talk, started talking about their business and their families, they could have a five or six hour conversation, not disagree on one thing, right? But the, the divisiveness in our country has created this particular problem. So my point on building your following is you don't have to build your following in the little area that you want to focus on in terms of leadership, you should build your following of people who can be like-minded around the idea of creating good in, certain, in terms of uh, government. All right, sweet. So hopefully that answers your question. You got me excited, by the way, with the answer with that question, so I appreciate you asking that. All right, so by the way, this is, I should say this. <laughs> I just realized this when I looked at this uh, question. I answered your question. I didn't even answer your question, Mike. I can't play, I can, I can try. I tried to play that, it doesn't come out very, my kid did it, my kid did it really well, all right? So, all right, so, <laughs> all right, let me get to um, a couple more of the questions. I've got Barry, uh, let's see, Gina, Diana, David. Oh, that's a good question. Um, and then Roy. All right, cool. So um, let's do, I'm going to do, I'm going to just hit a couple quickly. So uh, Gina, right now, all the uh, deck is getting reshuffled when it comes to the events. Um, I know you're registered for Ultimate Speaker, and I know many of you watching right now are registered for the Ultimate Speaker. Right now, uh, my team is in the final stages of coming up with a plan for that event. I was waiting, frankly, to see what was happening with the state governments, but they're just kind of all dragging their feet. Uh, and so it's getting time for us to begin to execute that particular plan. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you know about that next week, all right? So we're gonna do a training on Tuesday, a little closed door training Tuesday afternoon you're gonna get invited to. I'm gonna kind of pull back the veil and show you what we're looking at doing. And that will be set in stone within the next week. And then as of the fall event, we're gonna see what happens when it comes to that. But uh, very likely what you just said will happen. So uh, Barry, oh, David Zetz, I'm gonna do this one quick too. And by the way, I've got about 10 more minutes or so to answer your questions, maybe uh, 12, and then I'm gonna be focusing on your implementation items for this particular week uh, on Focus Friday, okay? So uh, get those ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna do this one quickly because this is a great question. David says, if you could wave a magic wand and make three problems go away related to your fitness, what would they be? So I like this question, and I'm gonna not answer it exactly the way that you asked, but I'm gonna just say, David is a student of a system uh, that I created uh, way back in the day called Consult and Profit. That system became my current system called Strategic Advisor, which essentially is the advanced course on what I just described. And inside that system, 
uh, I have a question that I teach my students to ask when they're doing consulting. And the question goes like this. If I could wave a magic wand and make three problems go away related to your fill in the blank, right? So let's say you're a digital marketing consultant. You would say, if I could wave a magic wand and make three problems go away with your digital marketing, what would they be? If you're talking to a business owner and you say, what would, if I could make, wave a magic wand and make three problems go away in your business, what would they be? If I'm talking to a married couple, if I could wave a magic wand and make three problems go away in your marriage, what would they be? It is a, it is a, a amazing question to ask to get people engaged in potentially paying you for the solution to their problem. So I'm not going to answer the question as you actually asked it just because I'm good. So as far as that goes, I just need to sleep. I need to not stop waking up at 5.59 in the morning is what I need to do. Uh, and then I'll be good. All right. So I have two, three more questions, Barry, Diana, and Roy, and I'm going to go through these um, fairly quickly. And then I'm going to come back and do Focus Friday with you. So if you got any more questions, Now's the time to get them in. I'm going to do these fast. All right, so if you just joined us, this is the Ask Me Anything show. My name is Ed Rush, former fighter pilot, uh, your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. Uh, this is Focus Friday. So in a moment, I'm going to be asking your accountability items. But before I do that, let me get to Barry's question. He says, what are your lead generation efforts concentrated, social media, speeches, or other? All right, so... Uh, I'm going to answer that question for Barry for right now. I'm going to show you where I'm where I'm focusing on right now. So I gave my team two main objectives uh, over this period during during the coronavirus bunker time. Uh, number one was to grow our social media following by a hundred thousand people, uh, and number two is is to grow our email list, our opt-in email list by ten thousand. So social media, hundred thousand email opt-in list uh, by 10,000, and we're moving in that direction. We haven't accomplished either one of those goals, but we're definitely moving in that direction. On social media, Barry, uh, I have five social media that I use personally in my business, uh, and I think that I, in the order of importance, and I did this on a prior show, uh, number five order of importance uh, was Twitter. Number four order of importance is Facebook, uh, except for Facebook advertising, which I would actually move up. Number three order of importance we're on right now, which is YouTube. Uh, number two order of importance is Instagram. Number one order of importance is LinkedIn. So if I could, had to do one, it would be LinkedIn. If I had to do two right now, it would be Instagram. Now, LinkedIn for me is the best place for me to connect with my actual target market. So right now, we're moving things around a little bit to try to create specific LinkedIn content for engagement on that particular particular platform, but that's because I work with business owners. So do you. The second one right now is Instagram. Now, I said this the other day when I did this interview with Marquetta, I'm not a big fan personally of Instagram. It's not my preferred means of sharing content. I like the spoken word and I like writing. Pictures is not my thing. Hey, well, you know what? It is for someone else. But then I realized my market is there uh, and I'm generating very successfully leads very inexpensively on LinkedIn using advertising on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to know, bonus for you, baby, come on, I'm going to show it to you really quickly. The actual page, um, let me see if I can find, if you go to edrush.com slash free book, I'm going to pull this page up and show it to you. Uh, this is the page that I am sending most of my traffic through right now. And the conversions on this page uh, are excellent. Okay. So little bonus tip for you in terms of a uh, lead generation. Right now, the last I checked that uh, is that uh, um, to cold traffic, cold traffic. I'm talking about never heard of Ed Rush before, uh, never uh, any idea who this is, never seen a blog post. To cold, cold, cold traffic, this page is converting over 50% of all visitors, okay? And that's being done uh, using targeted ads. Um, there's some really key components to this page that I won't go through. Um, uh, well, yeah, I will. Uh, the image of the book is important. The headline is important. This is also important. See how this pops up name and email instead of it, it uh, instead of it actually being embedded into the page. This also uh, increases conversions. And if you want to know, uh, that page was created in uh, lead pages. So, or not lead pages, um, click funnels. So, if you're familiar with click funnel system, uh, that's it. So, that's right now where I'm focused about a hundred percent of our time. Uh, on doing that. And part of the strategy, Barry, uh, is this particular show, we get typically 
three to five times as much traction on the um, media from this show from clips we use from this show, not from the show itself. So each show will get anywhere from maybe 100 to 1,500 viewers over, say, the week to a uh, week and a half after the show on YouTube. But then, Barry, we'll put those, we'll put little clips, like little short three to five minute clips up on Instagram and we'll get 700 views. Well, boom, just like that. Or five, 300, 400, 500 views just from those clips in a single day on the actual clip that brings people back. Uh, to opt in. Okay, so good stuff, man. Thank you for that question. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to your question next, Diana. If you just joined us, my name's Ed Rush. This is the Ask Me Anything show. Um, you can come on and ask me anything. And I'm going to do this next Friday, too. Uh, so if I don't get to all the questions right now, I will uh, next week. So Diana says, Is a video being made ahead in the garden better than a live stream for getting noticed? Uh, totally up to you, uh, Diana. So both of those are perfectly acceptable mediums. Um, sometimes people just want to see you in your real environment, okay? Um, so turning it around and saying, here's this and here's this and here's this, give it a shot. And by the way, the great thing about live streaming, if you don't like it, what you just did, you can turn it off and delete it. <laughs> and only the five people that clicked on the live or whatever are going to actually see that. Or sometimes you want to like get it right. You want to get the light right, or you want to get you know the setup right and make sure the sound is right and make sure you say the right thing. So what I will tell you is that every market's different and every market likes engaging in their own way and probably both would be the answer to your question. And so what I would recommend is do both, right? Turn your phone around on Instagram, on um, uh, Facebook Live, uh, on, on, uh, on, on a LinkedIn video. LinkedIn isn't doing live. But, Maybe they will be by the time I get done with, with this show. They should be. They've got it in beta. But give it a shot on your platforms, Diana, that people follow you, and try different mediums and see which one works best for you. Just remember, your live stream turns into a video anyway so that you can use that in your, um, in your business as well. Okay? So um, I'm going to go to your question next, Roy. Hang on real quick. Let me just get rid of this one. Uh, if you just joined us, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. Uh, this is the Ask Me Anything show. Uh, I got a time for about eight more minutes worth of questions, so we'll do this quickly, uh, and then I'll get to uh, the uh, Focus Friday stuff. So Roy, that's a good picture, man. I like your 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 uh, TED Talk picture there, Roy. That is awesome. Uh, what platform do most of your speaking leads come from? All right, so I wish, Roy, I had a single answer to this question. So for example, um, I get speaking deals from an organization called Executive Speakers Bureau. So I have a bureau that gives me some of my speaking deals. And I have some speaking deals that just come in sight unseen from my website. And I have some speaking deals that come in from referrals from other uh, meeting planners. And I have other speaking deals that come in from people that see me on LinkedIn. And probably the most number of speaking deals I get are from people that I know that are in the event industry. So for example, I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you an example. So I've done some speaking for a friend of mine whose name is Bill Glazer. In fact, uh, I think I've spoken for Bill and with Bill at about 4 to 5 different events. Now, it was about 2 years ago that Bill said to me, "Hey, would you like to do some speaking at a friend of mine's event?" I said, "Yeah, I'd love to do that." So he invited he introduced me to somebody whose name is Rory Fat, who at the time was doing events for the restaurant industry. Then again, this last March, I was speaking again at one of Bill Glazer's events, and one of the attendees who does events in the real estate industry came up to me and said, hey, I'd like to talk to you about potentially speaking at your event. And so, Roy, I'd say about 40 to 50% of my actual speaking events come from other people that I know who do events in the industry and their connections, okay? So I have a pretty robust system for generating, or sorry, for getting a, a spin-off speaking events from current speaking events. And if you're uh, coming to Ultimate Speaker, which I'm pretty sure you are, um, you're gonna see, or if we do it online, we're, we're gonna do it one way or another. We're gonna do it, okay? We're gonna do it, trust me. I've gotta plan for this. And by the way, if you're registered, side note, if you're registered for Ultimate Speaker and we don't do it live, you're gonna get hooked up, okay? I already got it all figured out if we don't do it live, but I really do wanna do it live. All right, so, um, so in that event, I'm gonna show you 
my speaking system for how I use the platform to get other speaking events after that. Okay, so very, very good question. Uh, thank you for that. All right, a couple other comments in chat, and I've got one other question. Michael Fortin, you're the man. I have two other questions. Uh, let's see, Dennis and then... Uh, Michael, that's great. Thank you, buddy, I appreciate that. I spent, I spent about two hours on the phone with this guy yesterday. He is a marketing whiz. All right, but you can't hire him because he's, he's busy working with me. <laughs> so uh, if you just joined us, my name's Ed Rush. This is the Ask Me Anything show. I've got, I think, two questions left to go. Uh, and then we'll get cranking. Oh, by the way, Dr. Wendy Lee, she said, so happy you're here being positive. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Uh, you're awesome, too. I've been following you, as you know, on Instagram, and some of the things that you're doing there are so cool. So thank you for your positivity as well. Michael Fortin says, what would you, what would you suggest? What would you suggest? There are some words that make it sound like you're a drunk person. Um, I think it was Dana Carvey who said that the word judicial system makes you sound drunk. And for some reason, Michael, even though I haven't had a single drink since last December, um, don't read into that, I just decided to stop. Uh, for some reason, this word suggests, what would you suggest? Would you, would you suggest, what would, I'm gonna do this right. What would you suggest? <laughs> I just I was gonna do it right. I have to say it now without laughing. What, uh, hold on, what would you suggest people who are stuck at home do in order to help a business or side hustle? Two things, uh, quick answers to this question. Number one uh, thing that I would do is, is if you're looking for revenue, I would try to find a way to help people and get paid to do it, okay? So the first thing I tell people, look, if you need an extra five or $10,000, go get a deal open up the uh, kimono a little bit to the people that you're working with and see if there's a challenge in their business or in life that they need to solve and to work with you. The idea that there's no money out there is nothing more than a myth. So that's the first one. The second one is I would use this time at home to build a platform for what you want in the future. And Michael, it's interesting because that's what you and I actually spent two hours talking about uh, because I, I want you to think about this. Look at yourself, imagine yourself, you've heard me say this before, imagine yourself in 2025, looking back at the spring of 2020 and ask yourself, what would you in 2025 be looking back at yourself right now with a huge smile on your face because there was something you did now that made the biggest difference for you five years from now, okay? And so look, remember what I said in the beginning, there are evil people leading the world. Well, guess what? Five years from now, we should be leading the world, okay? So what can you do right now? You can build a platform. You can build an audience. You can figure out who exactly your market is. You can dial in your messaging, right? You can trial and error. Like Diana asked that question about video and, and live stream. You know what's great, Diana? The first few times I went on live stream, it looked awful. <laughs> I mean, look at the first episode of Ed Talks Live. We're in, I think this is the 28th, 29th episode. The first one, you know what? It wasn't all that great. The lights weren't all that good. I didn't have the graphics figured out. It just wasn't as good, but it gets better. And so my point is, you're just going to do it and you're going to learn and you're going to grow. And the first time you turn that phone around, man, on a Facebook Live, there's going to be like two people. You're going to be like, ah, you know what? Don't despise the day of small beginnings because it's going to grow. So the first one, if you need money, go get a deal. The second one, by the way, the second one is to build your platform. We're talking about both of those right now here on Ed Talks Live. By the way, uh, if you are interested in the Go Get a Deal uh, program, so uh, I figured something out just this morning uh, because one of you invested in another product on my website using the coupon code I gave you the other day. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you a hack, okay, uh, that I figured out this morning. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say who, who, who t I'm not gonna say who f found this, but his name rhymes with Roy. All right, so, <laughs> so here's the deal. I'm gonna show you this really quickly. If you look at my website, edrush.com, and you click on the products button, okay? I gave you a, uh, a coupon code to this product, right? So this 21 day time freedom miracle, it's just five for 97. I gave you a coupon code uh, for this week that makes this 197. Now, if you haven't taken advantage of this deal, go, go get it. Now, here's what I realized though. If you click on another product, like for example, this product here called Strategic Advisor is the one 
that helps you get deals and get paid to help other people in business, life, relationships, whatever. It helps you get paid what you're worth, okay? So this system right here that you're looking at is actually $9.97. <clears throat> Check it out. If you use the same coupon code, see where it says freedom? It makes that $400 cheaper. Now, I wasn't planning on doing that, but uh, you know what? I just figured, A, it's my mistake, which means it's your benefit, okay? So if you're interested in any of the products over here at the Success Store, even if you've already invested in one of them, apparently they're all $400 off. Now, I don't know how long it's going to be before I fix that little glitch, right? So you got the secret weapon, which is my persuasion system. You got $400 off of this too. It's all $400 off, not intentional. It was not, it's a, it was a happy, it, as Bob Ross, the painter, remember Bob Ross, the, the painter? And, and by the way, if I, if I, if I stay stuck in the bunk, in this bunker for another few months, my hair is going to look like Bob Ross's. All right. So as Bob Ross, the painter once said, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if you can tell me what Bob Ross said. Let's see in chat. If you can tell me, uh, <laughs> if, at least if in chat, you can tell me what Bob Ross's quote was that I was just about to say. <laughs> so, all right. So I like it. Roy, might have been the one. <laughs> I like that. Gina says, not me, mate. In my first live stream, I was amazeballs. Just kidding. Uh, it's very funny. Thank you, Michael. Recommend, yeah, instead of, instead of, um, suggest, suggest. There was another word I was joking with my wife the other day. There was another word that I couldn't say without sounding like a drunk person. All right. Um, Dennis, quickly, I'm going to do this one and then we'll get to Focus Friday. Uh, this one and then Dan's, um, question and then I'll do this. Question, as a keynote speaker, Dennis says, I'm sometimes asked about doing breakout sessions. Would you? So Dennis, it's a very simple question. Um, if a company is more is willing to pay me to do a breakout session, I'm more than happy to do a breakout session, okay? So I would prefer to be up on the main stage. So if I'm doing a breakout, uh, remember that your success as a speaker has a lot to do with what happens after the talk, not so much what happens actually in the room. So as a breakout speaker, you'd have a little bit of a different challenge. Main stage speaker, thousand people, thousand people come into the room. Breakout speaker, if there's three breakouts and there's a thousand people at the event, one breakout might have 200 people, one breakout might have 100 people, and one breakout might have 12 people. And you're like, wait a second, Ed, the math doesn't work. There's 100, 200, 112, that's 312. Where did the other thousand people go? Well, you know what? They're over in the, in the trade show area. They're off getting breakfast. And so as a breakout speaker, if you're main stage, you're going to get almost everyone. As a breakout speaker, speaker, part of your job as a speaker is to get people into your room, okay? So Dennis, I did an event with Tony Robbins like two years ago where Tony spoke for 20,000 people and then there were 10 breakout rooms and I was one of the 10 breakout rooms. I'm like, you know how hard it is to get distracted entrepreneurs into a room? I literally put signs outside the main room with my huge picture on it that I built that were like, room 302. Then I went and got those little footprints and made a footprints up to 302. Then I had my team literally get all the people in line and make the line go down the stairs to 302. And then I had my team go, this is the line right here. This is the one you want to be in. They're all like, you can get in here. And I would, I would have my team on the stairs as people were coming up, telling people, this is the line. This is where you want to go. I probably got an extra 50 to 75 people into that room just because of the, this is the line, that's where it is thing, okay? And then all, all of a sudden everybody comes in the room. Now, that was a, a that was an event where I was offering products, okay? So a little bit different than a keynote, but same, same thing. Again, if you're just doing a breakout, I would find little clever ways uh, to get people into your breakout session. But the bottom line answer of it is like this, uh, Dennis. I have a simple rule and that rule goes like this. If somebody wants to give me money, I let them, right? So if somebody wants to pay me to do a breakout session, I'm a happy to do a breakout session, all right? So let's do one more question. And then I am going to come back and do Focus Friday. So start putting your implementation items in the chat. Tell me what your big thing you're going to do this week, what's the one big thing that you're gonna implement in your life or your business, all right? So this, hang on. This is, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is the Ask Me Anything show. And here comes our... Uh, last question for today. Hang on. There it is. 
Dan G says, how much do you advocate or balance cold, warm calling to prospect leads that come in addition to just relying on inbound social media leads? So Dan, when I was talking about social media, just so you know, that wasn't the, that's not the only lead source that comes in uh, in the business. I was simply just using that as an example. If I can, 100% of the people that we're prospecting are warm, okay? So for example, one of the best ways that I get new customers is from other uh, thought leaders, teachers, authors, gurus that I do training events with. So for example, one of my good friends and one of my allies in business is a guy named Michael Haig. And some of you came to me initially because of Michael Haig. Now, Michael is one of the best screenwriting coaches in the world. He's also a great storytelling coach and he started working with entrepreneurs over the last few years, teaching them how to write great stories. So we've been working together on different projects and I promote Michael and his trainings and he promotes me and my trainings uh, and some of you came to me from, uh, from Michael. Now, Dan, when somebody comes to me from Michael, the moment he writes an email, he's got a connection to those people on his list. So when he says, hey, you should come to this training that Ed and I are doing online, it's free and we're going to do it on Zoom, the moment someone clicks and opts in, they go from cold to warm, okay? Um, now, once somebody opts in and starts getting indoctrinated, I'm using that word in a good way, uh, into my way of thinking and my system, they become warm. Uh, and so typically, I have very few people that go cold directly to a sale. Normally, they go cold to some sort of content engagement, email, book, video, webinar, that kind of warms them on free content and then that moves them to a, a buying decision. And normally, Dan, in my business, the first buying decision is a event registration. Uh, often, it's a product. We've been talking about products on this event. Uh, but the majority is actually originally an event registration and that typically moves people into the, the buying part. Okay, so cool. Uh, very good question, thank you for that. All right, so here we go. Um, oh, so just a couple comments. Barry says, sometimes the breakouts are more intimate and better connections are made. One other thing I would say about breakouts is I always try to have them put out less chairs and have a whole bunch of them stacked in the back. So for example, I'll put out 50 chairs and once it fills up with 50 people, they'll pull out another 20 chairs that'll fill up because having it feel full, more people will come because of that. Yes. Oh, oh, Bob Ross. The Bob Ross quote, I can't believe I'm going to that. Where, where, hold on a second. Where's the Bob Ross quote? Oh, here it is. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said, paint this little happy tree. What's the, here, <laughs> he said, happy little, cl I got, we got a stuck, there it is. That's the one. Thank you, Denise. He says, we don't have mistakes. We just have happy little accidents. <laughs> Mike Semmel says, I listen to the Strategic Advisor MP3 audio files on my daily walks. I love it, man. By the way, all my courses, um, thank you, Kristen Sabayan and her team at Spark the Brand. They are the most professionally laid out and executed courses I've ever seen, and I'm biased, but that doesn't mean I'm not right. Every single course, well-produced video, beautifully produced MP3, beautifully produced transcript and notes. And so sometimes people like to read, sometimes people like to listen, and sometimes people like to watch, and all of my information courses online are in all three formats. All right, so thank you, D Dylan Bradley. He says, strategic advisor is fire. Uh, let's see if I'm um, missing anything. All right, so let's move into Focus Friday. We got a few minutes. I want you to tell me what your big implementation item is. I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of motivation and then we're gonna rock and roll. So Dr. Wendy Lee says, I'm launching a weekly webinar to stream on Zoom and Facebook Live. Maybe another one through StreamYard to elsewhere, still working on making it most efficient um, logistically. And you can also use Zoom if you want to, Dr. Wendy, you can use Zoom connected to Facebook Live and use your Zoom meeting, but also stream it to Facebook Live. So uh, we're doing that on one side of my business. Diana says, thank you, doing what you told me. We'll continue to reach out to my news media. Got, oh, great, 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 great. Just got an article today written about my organic garden. Hey, congratulations, very good. Virtual, well, this isn't a virtual clap, this is a real one, uh, but thank you, that's really cool. Yeah, you can use that if you want. I'm biased, but that doesn't mean I'm not right. I started saying in my, um, uh, in my talks, I would say, I would say this book is the most amazing book you'll ever read. And I'm biased. I would say I'm biased. And then one day in one of my talks, I, Wendy, I said, I'm biased, but that doesn't mean I'm not right. And everyone laughed. And a little speaker tip. Um, 
sometimes your best content comes from sort of passing comments that you make. And if everybody laughs at a passing comment, you write that down and you use it again. All right. So Gina says, I got back to Duolingo, catching up on the French podcast. I love it. John Teague says, building out his new website, testimonials collected, copy nearly there. Now time to make it real. Oh, you know what we should do? Maybe next week we'll do a website uh, event where we bri- we look at people, or maybe the week after, where, where you can submit your websites and we all look at them and give you review ideas for that. Uh, very good. Barry says, continuing the 20-day miracle. I love it. Uh, Aaron Miller says, I'm starting the 21-day Time Freedom Miracle. For those of you who just joined us, that's my productivity course. It's this one right here. Uh, let me see if I can find the screen again. Uh, I know I'm sharing. This is the uh, this is the persuasion course. So just so you know, there's three courses, uh, three main courses that I have. This is Secret Weapon is a persuasion communication course. 21-day Time Freedom is the course that gives you uh, time management, productivity, five minutes a day, this, this one's only 10 minutes a day for 21 days. This is five minutes a day uh, for, uh, for uh, 21 days. And then Strategic Advisor is my consulting product. If you want all three, there's a deal here at the bottom, okay? So, um, Lonica says, hang on. 21 day daily consistent meditation. A couple days ago, I subscribed to Insight Timer and started. <laughs> now, now, you have to have been here about three weeks ago to remember that I said, told the story about Brock Devine. All right, you got to, if you're not, if you're not, if you don't know the story, you got to go find it. It's on my weekly flight briefing this week too, so it's on the website. All right, Aaron says, miracle, I like it. Uh, rebrand, relaunch of the website, social media accounts, busy week, love it. Uh, Sheree, doing good groundwork with Kajabi to start a membership and a subscription product. And Delisa, uh, put the website in there. And I told you, all that stuff works for everything, uh, apparently. That won't be forever. We'll fix that. But I thought, you know what? We're all stuck in our bunker right now, so what a better time to learn. Every day this week, people have been investing in those products. So congratulations to you to get in there and get started. Uh, I'm going to just tell you, like Dr. Wendy said, they're awesome. I know I'm biased, but that doesn't mean I'm not right. And they will absolutely change the way you look at everything. And now's a great time to learn. Now's an amazing, amazing time to learn. I'm doing quite a bit right now in the uh, in studying the history of movements. So uh, Denise, you asked a question about how to create uh, political movements. I've been studying that into the past to look at some of the triggers uh, that have created some of the best and some of the worst movements. Also, you want to know what to avoid uh, at the same time. All right, so I'm going to leave you with just a little bit of motivation. I started today by talking about uh, the fact that your feelings, your emotions are... Uh, fundamentally triggered by the way that you're thinking. The challenge though is your emotions connect to your body sometimes. So um, so these last two days, I told you I've been kind of frustrated and, and you feel like some tightness in here and you're like, oh, you get that like thing. Well, you can reverse that back. And so sometimes it's hard to control the way you think, but it's actually super easy to control the way that you move. Uh, so for example, I have, uh, I have four, I have four kids, four kids. 14, uh, 13, 11, and one. And when I'm trying to help my kids' attitudes, sometimes I'll help them with their bodies. Uh, so for example, uh, if I have a, one of my kids who's not feeling great, it's, it's actually another hack inside this book, right around page 110. I have a hack called the I Feel Amazing hack, uh, where you stick your hands in the air and you jump up and down like you're a champion, and then you scream, I feel amazing, I feel amazing, I feel amazing. And I tell you, when you do that three times, I feel amazing, Feel amazing. I feel amazing. When you're done, no matter what you were feeling before, you actually feel pretty good. You feel amazing because you can reverse it back through your body into your mind. What I can tell you is this. It's either going to get better and then we're going to be in charge or it's going to get worse and then we're going to be in charge. But either way, great entrepreneurs just like you and I are going to be in charge of the world. And when we do, it's going to be better and faster and stronger and we're going to be smarter. We're going to go about things a lot better, but until then, your job is to, just like I answered Denise's question, your job is to go out and create wealth for yourself and your business that you can create and keep, and it's to build your platform. So with that, I'll see you on Monday, 10 o'clock Pacific, one o'clock Eastern, for Ed Talks, the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. Smile as you go into the weekend. It's going to be awesome. I'll hang around for a minute or two and chat, but thank you for your time and attention. This week, get ready for next week. It's going to be awesome. I'll talk to you soon.